Happy Independence Day, everyone. It is your Black Knight, and as I thought about what to do for an Independence Day video, I thought about the most American of your possible companions in Fallout 4, Hancock. Now, it's not the hat that gives him this distinction, but his internal struggle. You see, Hancock very much believes in freedom. He thinks everyone should get to choose how they make their way and find whatever joy they can in life. He believes no one should stand in the way of freedom. And when people do stand in the way of freedom, when they act as oppressors, he stands up to them, with violence if necessary. The guy was scum, used us drifters like his own personal piggy bank. He had this goon squad he'd used to keep people in line. Every so often, he'd let them off the leash, go blow off some steam on the populace at large. Once we'd mopped up, we strolled right into Vic's quarters in the state house, wrapped a rope around his neck, and threw him off the balcony. And there I am, gun in hand, draped in Hancock's duds, looking at all the people of Good Neighbor assembled below. I had to say something. That first time I said him, they didn't even feel like my words. Of the people, for the people was my inaugural address. Became Mayor Hancock of Good Neighbor that day. And from then on, I vowed I'd never stand by and watch ever again. And yet he recognizes that in fighting for freedom, he's repressing the freedom of someone else. Someone else is not free to extort or steal or put somebody down. I needed to mention, just you taking care of Bobby. I ain't proud of having to put you through that. That sort of dictatorial sh ain't usually my style. She tried to dupe us both. Dealing with her was the right move. True, but it doesn't change the fact that she's out of the picture because of us. Hell, that sort of bulls the whole reason I became mayor in the first place. He worries about crossing that line. He doesn't express it this way, but he wants to find that point where freedom is at its maximum and oppression is at its minimum. You can't get that without some restrictions. But if you have too many, or too few, things go awry. I just hope you get where I was coming from. I ain't out to bring harm to anyone that didn't earn it. You can widen the sweet spot with certain guaranteed freedoms. Freedom of speech gives people the right to point out oppression so that it can be stopped. The right to bear arms gives people the muscle to do so. The two work hand in hand. Especially in politics, speech is effective because there is a large percentage of the population that the government knows is armed and raised with a tradition of resisting oppression. Could you have a successful rebellion in an age of drones and nukes? Doesn't matter. The war for independence was won not through sheer power, but because we made it too much trouble for Britain to keep us. The Civil War was a failed rebellion, but no one wants to relive that nightmare. And so we have these unbelievable arguments in our political space that makes it seem like the country is bitterly divided. But think about this. We can be publicly bitterly divided. You can say you disagree with the President or the Congress or the Supreme Court and you don't end up in the gulag. When free speech seems to be restricted in this country, it's usually because it's speech that is oppressing to other people. And it's usually regulated by the free speech of others. It seems to me that hate speech is far more aggressively suppressed by the free speech of free citizens than it is by the government. There's a constant dialogue in this country about what can and cannot be said. People argue about it because they know it matters. You have to suppress oppression, but you can't suppress everything you think is oppression in case you're just being the oppressor. So, while it seems like there's turmoil in America, make no mistake, this is how it's supposed to work. You'll know that freedom is dead in America when it seems like everyone agrees. That's why Hancock's internal struggles are so symbolic. Freedom increases with responsibility. The more responsible a people is, the more freedom they can have. James Madison said if men were angels, no government would be necessary. Hancock finds himself having to intervene when men aren't angels, and struggles with that because he knows he's not an angel. 
but he has a sense of justice, which is different than a sense of justification. He knows what's right as opposed to what can be argued to be right. I wanted to end this on a quote from the real John Hancock, and I think I found the perfect one. The greatest ability in business is to get along with others and influence their actions. That's Hancock's goal in life, to get along with people and make a difference in how things turn out. These are very American ideals, and you can argue back and forth about how well the USA lives up to those ideals at any point in history. But the ideals remain. This is your Black Knight. Have a great night, and a happy Independence Day.